Jack here, JBF Music and Guitar Lessons. In this quick guitar tricks, we're looking at 10 awesome things you can do with Ron Bumblefoot Thal's thimble technique. I'll start off fairly simple, looking at how to use it for bending and trills, and then get trickier as I go on, looking at sweeps, tapping, and all the sorts of shreddy stuff. But first up, I'll just explain a little bit what's going on. Okay, so I've got a metal thimble on my second finger. I'll be switching this anyway, so it's not too important. I think Bumblefoot tends to use his little finger, and basically you can use this to get interesting noises from the guitar. A coin or slide or even a pick will more or less do the same job if you don't have a thimble. So we know we can raise the pitch by moving up a fret, so the open string, then up a semitone. But we can also raise the pitch down at the bridge. Why? What wizardry is this? Well, the pitch gets higher because the string has been shortened. It doesn't matter which end you use, the string is still shorter and will go up in pitch, which is the backbone of our first trick. You want to be on the neck pickup for this one and trill the second fret to the open. Whilst trilling, put the thimble on the string. I'm using the G string and slowly move it up towards the fretboard. I like to speed the trill up as I go for a bit of dynamics. The thimble is such a huge trademark of Ron Thal's style, he even has a magnet on the body of his guitar so he can store it for easy access. New strings, some extra presence, treble, high mids, compression, gain, and a bit of wah-wah tilted down will help get the thimble sound a bit more prominent. Getting it perfectly intonated can be really quite difficult, so for the time being I'd suggest accepting the naive sounding slightly out of tune notes. Sticking on the neck pickup and using the same principle to get a bluesy bending effect. Here I find using the side of the thimble the most natural way. A bonus tip, you might want to experiment with the side edges and kind of flat top to see what suits you best. I'm finding it depends a bit on the lick. Anyway, sliding the thimble towards the neck. What I'm doing is aiming for the blues note. On the next string, I'm putting the thimble somewhere between this note and this one. And then on the E string, I'm kind of going maybe just slightly flat version of the E. To round it up, I'm doing a quick slide and then pretty much trem picking on the string with the thimble. Holding it this way seems to work for me. I'm kind of using like the, the edge of it there and just going, just kind of trem picking through the string. And let's do the full thing a bit more slowly. fake whammy, so if you don't have a whammy or pitch shifting pedal, this can sort of work in that way. I've done some videos on the whammy recently, so card up there if you want to know more about that. So here I'm on my bridge pickup, and I'll probably stay there for the rest of the video. I want to get this G an octave higher. So to find where I'm going to, I'm going to go to the last note of the fretboard, which is an E. And if I play that on the 12th fret on the E string, I find that I need to go up three semitones to reach a G. So let's try this thing here but using the thimble on the G string. So my G should be more or less here. So what I'm doing is using these notes that I know what they are as a reference to work out roughly where this octave is. Cool, but what I want to do is find the next octave for that whammy sound. So this will be a bit trickier and to help us out, I'm gonna gloss over into the next trick then I'm return to this one. So to pitch this, what I'm going to use is smaller intervals to get up to wherever the second octave is. I'm going to use a major arpeggio, which sounds like this. Now I want to find these notes all on the G string starting around here, so playing it all on one string would look like this. Now I want to find these notes, but what I'm going to have to do is take this shape and condense it down so it fits into here. So what I'm doing is thinking about the distances between the notes but on a much smaller scale. So let's give it a go. We've got this as our G, this should be the, the first octave, about there, and let's try and get this arpeggio. Right. Nope. <laughs> okay, that's more or less there, so I know that my second octave is around here. 
Obviously you can play melodies and all sorts on this, not just arpeggios, and finding the notes might take some trial and error just like it did for me there. Now back to the whammy trick. Alright, so my second octave, we've got that roughly in the bag. Now I'm going to play the G on the 12th fret. I'm going to hit where I think the first octave is, and then slide up to the second octave. For a bonus trick, you can add some thimble vibrato. Uh, thimble vibrato, can't say that's a phrase I ever thought I'd hear myself say, but there it is. So I could also just move to the B string and do the same thing. You can make this one more musical, but an over the top use seems like a much more fun introduction example. Uh, so let's do the example slowly. These are kind of messy because you need quite a lot of gain and treble, so when you play them faster they do sound a little bit cleaner. So it's a sort of tangent trick we did an arpeggio up and down one string there, but how about across the strings? So as a reference here is an E minor arpeggio. And if I find those notes an octave higher with my thimble... Here I'm kind of using the pickup and cool pieces and stuff like that as markers. It sounds quite cool but it's very staccato, so for a bonus we could try thimble sweeping for a smoother sound. Somewhat messy, maybe more of a novelty sound than a usable one, but then again it might just be a case of more practice. The aforementioned tapping, you get a pick tap style sound and don't have to use quite as good a technique to get a strong sound when compared to regular finger tapping. For some cool bonus tricks here, you can get a vibrato by staying inside one fret. It's a bit like an extreme classical vibrato. After that, when I'm going down, I'm trying to get the microtones, notes in between the notes for a weirder sound. So when I'm doing this, rather than staying in the same position, what I'm doing is slowly moving down as I tap to get those notes in between the notes. I've got some uh, tap sliding with the thimble. And let's slowly just go through the whole thing. Next up, tapping with a thimble beyond the fretboard. For more beyond the fretboard shenanigans, check out the card in the top right. I'm going for a bit of legato here, a regular tap, then the thimble tap, and I'm aiming about there. You could also do a tap slide beyond the fretboard, uh, just for a bit of a bonus trick there, and the lick slowly. Sweep tapping but with the thimble, I'm going for an E minor sweep. I'm tapping around here, here, and about here I think. And you could also chuck in a tap slide, because, because why not? And the whole thing. tapping idea is a bit similar to what I did in the second lick, that kind of bluesy one, but this time playing on the fretboard. So I'm doing a kind of thimble pick tapping. Uh, so I'm, I'm holding this note, and if you move it you will hear a change in the lick. Uh, and then I'm just sort of going through the string. Uh, playing one fret only, uh, the tapping seems to come as more of a sort of byproduct of the cymbal hitting the string above the fret than anything else. Uh, so let's try that slowly. A lot of these licks sound a lot better fast than they do slowly, because when they're slow you can hear all the kind of mistakes and the weird noises and the dodgy intonation. But I think that's part of the fun of it as well. I'm going to be 
step aside, you can even just use it as a pick. Quite a distinctive tone. It might give a solo in the studio that little bit extra edge you're looking for. It feels quite natural to me. I'm not too sure if that's just my playing or if it's universal, so let me know in the comments. And the bridge and the neck pickups have a different sound. So just something to experiment with there. And from one end of the spectrum to the other, all the gimmicks. So we got birds. So tapping somewhere on the E, I'm doing three times. Sliding up, and then tapping either two or three times, followed by another slide. I'm sure a bird enthusiast will do a much more convincing job in this one. You can do the, the Steve Vai guitar speak, or like the TV show The Clangers. And I'm just tapping and slang, I'm trying to do so in a mildly comical manner, and mimicking the cadence of natural speech. A bit like that. A great way to mock fellow bandmates at practice, actually. I'm calling on that one a bonus trick. And finally, a UFO type sci fi noise. So, what I'm doing is uh, holding the thimble, taking the flat side of it, and just going between two strings, moving down or moving up. So, just between those ones, the G and the E, or the G and the B, tends to sound best. And it also does a pretty mean big scream. Cool, so those are 10 things you can do with the Ron Thal thimble technique. As a side note, I'd really suggest checking out the video, I think it's a Loudwire one where he's playing a Hello Kitty guitar. So not only does he get the Hello Kitty guitar, an acoustic guitar like a nylon string child one sounding good, but he also has a really good voice, so I'd really recommend checking that out. I might do licks to impress on his tune guitar suck, so let me know if that's something you guys are interested in. But yeah, this has been Quick Tricks, that's the playlist up there. Check out some other videos I've done, hit subscribe, leave a like and a comment if you want to, share and enable notifications with that little bell on the side, if you feel so inclined. Cheers guys.